Hi everybody, I'm Rook and welcome to the table for another Yu-Gi-Oh! Speed Duel deck profile. Now this deck initially started as more of a request. Somebody came to me and said, how do you build a Dragon Speed Duel deck without Dragon Caller? The skill Dragon Caller has been in the Speed Duel format since its inception, and it is what rocketed dragons to the front of the early meta when the game came out. Dragons really aren't playable without the skill Dragon Caller. It is the Kaiba skill, where if you have Lord of D in your hand, you can get Flute of Summoning Dragon. And if you have Flute of Summoning Dragon in your hand, you can get Lord of D, essentially completing the combo that Lord of D and Flute of Summoning Dragon use to summon all the big dragons and win you the game. I was challenged to make a deck without using Dragon Caller, so that is what led to this deck. I have what I'd like to call the Dark Dragon OTK deck. One of a few OTK decks that have surfaced as more and more cards have come out and made the OTK possible. Now I'd like to preface this deck profile by saying that while this deck is around Dark Dragon OTK, I would like you to see this deck as a template for any OTK deck that you would ever want to construct in the Speed Duel format. This deck utilizes a lot of cards that can be synonymous with other OTK decks if you feel the desire to build them. For example, I'm using Dark Dragon, but these cards could very well be interchangeable with something like a Spellcaster OTK, Harpy Lady OTK, any deck that you think has the boss monster power that you can get out pretty immediately to overwhelm your opponent in an OTK situation, a lot of these cards will work. So please take this deck profile as a template to help you achieve what you're looking to do in your OTK ventures. Let's start with the skill for this Dark Dragon OTK deck. And like I said, I am not using Dragon Caller. The goal was to try and find a skill that was almost comparable to Dragon Caller. I'm not saying it's better, but I'm saying that it would work around not using it and be interchangeable with other OTK decks. The skill that I landed on was David's Digging for Gold. Now, unfortunately, this skill is only currently available as a uh, pre-release participation card for the Trials of the Kingdom booster pack if you went to a sealed event. There were a, a number of different skills that you received for participating for a number of different sort of background characters from the Duel Links game. One of them being David and his Digging for Gold skill. This card is also rumored to be released later as a reprint in the Speed Duel box that is coming this November. David's Digging for Gold skill is very simple. Activate this skill during your main phase. Once per duel, you can banish three cards from your graveyard, then draw one card. This skill will work with just about any deck. Essentially, it's you see that you have three cards in your graveyard. On your main phase, you get rewarded for having three cards in your graveyard. You banish those cards. They could be traps, spells, monsters. You banish them, you get to draw a card. That's all that this skill is doing. It's giving you that one extra card draw that you need. A great example of getting Digging for Gold right off the bat on your first turn is if you were to play something like a Toon deck where you had three Toon Table of Contents. Say you started with a Toon Table of Contents in your opening hand, ditched it for a Toon Table, ditched it for a Toon Table, ditched it for a Toon, you have three cards in your graveyard right there. You can get that card draw on your very first turn. I do not run the Toon Table of Contents deck thinning in this particular deck, but that's a great example of a card that would work alongside an OTK deck and that you could utilize something like Digging for Gold. But Digging for Gold in this deck, I'm looking to just have three cards in my graveyard. Maybe it's turn two, turn three, and I'm able to get that extra card draw. The goal of this deck is to have all the cards that you need in your hand to completely overwhelm your opponent and win the game. Yes, that means we need Lord of D and Flute in your hand without any help of something like Dragon Caller. We're using other cards that allow you to draw, including the David skill, to get the cards into your hand. Let's move on to the monsters for this Dark Dragon OTK deck. We're starting with two Lord of D. Lord of D, obviously one half of the combo with Flute of Summoning Dragon. Lord of D will help you get your dragons out. Lord of D is a 1200 attack four star monster that says neither player can target dragon monsters on the field with card effects. Now the way this deck works is that you actually won't need to use Lord of D's effect because if you're playing this deck right, you'll actually be able to get all the cards out onto the field and completely overwhelm your opponent. But I run two Lord of D, I found that I was drawing it too much if I ran three, but Lord of D is one of the components you need in your hand in order to complete the OTK. Moving on, two Blue Eyes White Dragon. Blue Eyes White Dragon, a key component in this OTK deck, obviously it's a 300 attack dragon monster, and if you have the Lord of D and Flute, you get it out on the field no problem, and that will easily destroy your opponent. Say you have Lord of D on the field and you get two Blue Eyes out. One Blue Eyes has to take out the Set Monster or the Gap, the Divining Soldier or the Gravekeeper's Oracle that your opponent has on the field. And then the other Blue Eyes plus Lord of D is 4,200 life points, which is more than what you need to destroy your opponent. So two Blue Eyes White Dragon. I also run two because it is a great target for something like Summoner's Arc, which you'll see later in this deck. So two Blue Eyes White Dragon. Moving on, three Red Eyes Black Dragon. 
The reason I run three Red Eyes Black Dragon and only two Blue Eyes White Dragon is because one, Red Eyes Black Dragon is also a target for Summoner's Art that creates a total of five normal monsters that are good targets for Summoner's Art, which is a great way to thin the deck. And additionally, Red Eyes Black Dragon serves as a target for Allure of Darkness, which is a card that I run in this deck as well. Allure of Darkness is very good in getting some serious card draw to get your hand exactly where you want it. Of course, Red Eyes Black Dragon is also helpful in completing the OTK. So three Red Eyes Black Dragon. Next monster two, Dekoichi the Battle Chanted Locomotive. Dekoichi the Battle Chant Locomotive is a 1400 attack four star monster. It is a dark machine monster. It essentially is used where you set it and then you get its flip effect to draw one card. This is a great way to draw additional cards so that your hand is full of exactly what you need. And Dekoichi the Battle Chanted Locomotive is a dark monster, so it is a target for Allure of Darkness if you need it. And then moving on to our last monster, one Sphere Karibo. Sphere Karibo is really the only defense I have in this deck. The deck is a real pull the goalie kind of deck where you are just super aggressive trying to get all the cards you need to completely slam into your opponent for game. Not too much defense here, but the one defense I have is the one Sphere Karibo. Trying to keep this deck to 20 cards, which is why there's only one Sphere. And also Sphere Karibo I chose as a great defensive monster because it is also a dark target for Allure of Darkness. But Sphere Karibo is a great card you drop to the graveyard, spins that monster your opponent's attacking you with to defense mode to potentially save you from losing the game. And now, the rest of the cards are spells, so we're seeing 10 monsters and 10 spells. First spell here is the Flute of Summoning Dragon. This is what you need to complete the Lord of D combo. You need Lord of D and Flute in your hand. Once again, Dragon Caller would get this to you pretty easily, but the goal was to build this deck without Dragon Caller. So, digging for gold. Also, I find that maybe Bandit Keith's Switcheroo would be really good here. But you need to draw Lord of D and Flute of Summoning Dragon naturally. And you don't want to draw too many of one or the other. So like I have two Lord of D, I have two Flute of Summoning Dragon. Flute of Summoning Dragon, of course, will allow you to special summon up to two Dragon Monsters onto the field if Lord of D is present. Next, we have three Summoner's Art. Summoner's Art, a spell that I've used in several decks at this point. Really good deck thinner, helps you get those big dragons into your hand. Three Summoner's Art for three chances to get a Blue Eyes or Red Eyes into your hand. There are five total targets with both Red Eyes and Blue Eyes in the deck for Summoner's Art to target. So a great way to thin the deck. Three Summoner's Art, and then three Allure of Darkness. Three seems a little heavy, but three works here because you have so many dark targets. You have the three Red Eyes Black Dragon, the two Dekoichi the Battle Chant Locomotive, the two Lord D and the one Sphere Karibo, which totals eight dark targets. You are typically always finding a dark target and you're always able to banish maybe a spare red eyes you don't need, maybe a Dekoichi you don't need, Allure of Darkness is there for you. And then the final spell in this deck, and this is to completely eradicate any chance of your opponent trying to block or deflect an attack of your dragons, is two Night Beam. In a lot of my decks recently, I run Twister but in this deck I run Night Beam. The reason why I run Night Beam is because Night Beam is able to completely get rid of that Nightmare Wheel, completely get rid of that Zoma before your opponent is even able to activate it. Now, if your opponent's already activated Zoma, well, that's unfortunate, maybe side in a Twister, but two Night Beam to get rid of all of the back row just to make sure that your opponent has no chance at all. Another spell card you could run in this deck and in any OTK deck you're trying to use is a card like Offerings to the Doomed, just in case you are not confident with your monsters being able to take out whatever monster your opponent has on their side of of the field. The only reason why I'm not running Offerings of the Doomed here is because one, I believe that my dragons would be able to consistently beat over most monsters, and two, I would hate to use it early and have to skip my next draw phase as it defeats the whole purpose of trying to get all the card draw. Night Beam, for example, say your opponent has one monster out and two back row. I have both Night Beam in my hand. I have the Lord of D and Flute combo because of Lord of Darkness, Digging for Gold, all of those cards that help me get there, and I finally have the Summoner's Art to get the dragons into my hand. I'm ready to do everything. Let's Night Beam those two back row, and then let's get that combo off with Lord of D and Flute and potentially win the game. That is what this deck is all about. It's really fun trying to draw your whole hand that way. There's not too many speed duel decks where you're trying to draw so many cards. Like I said, this is a really good template for any kind of OTK deck that you're trying to do, whether it is Spellcasters, Harpy Ladies, Gravekeepers, any other big monster deck where you're trying to OTK your opponent in a fun way. Definitely recommend using things like Allure of Darkness, Digging for Gold or Switcheroo, and etc. Let me know what other kind of OTK decks you think about building in the Speed Duel format. I'm really into the Dragon OTK because it checks a lot of my boxes. It's huge boss monsters that you can get out pretty much for free, and also it serves for a lot of dark targets for a card like Allure of Darkness being such a great addition for card draw for the Speed Duel. If you guys like this profile, please subscribe for more as I have tons of more stuff coming up for you guys. Thanks so much guys, and I'll catch you later.